We're so grateful that you chose to join us today at the Ebenezer Baptist Church. We believe that God has a word with your name on it. Today, uh, we're wrestling through finding fulfillment in unfamiliar places. We've all been there before, perhaps this season of five or so weeks that we've been on this journey. It perhaps feels like we've been in the wilderness, but God is gonna lead us if we only trust him. Come on, go with me as we go into worship. family this is the day that the Lord has made and we will rejoice and be glad in it we thank God for waking us up this morning starting us on our way uh, and we believe by faith that God has so ordained us to be here for this time in this season and I believe by faith that God has a word with your name on it let us bow father in the name of Jesus we thank you for this worship experience God, we don't take anything for granted, Lord, but we lift you up, we magnify you, God, we extol you for who you are in our lives. God, we thank you for uh, just a time to hear from you. So, Spirit of the living God, fall fresh on this, your preacher. Spirit of the living God, fall fresh in this place. Touch each listening ear, Lord God, wherever they may be in their homes, Lord God, on the road, Lord God, perhaps even at work. God, we pray that the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart might be acceptable in your sight. Oh Lord, my strength and my redeemer. This is our prayer in Jesus' name. We pray, amen, amen. The word uh, that the Lord has given me uh, on this morning for each listening ear uh, comes from two very familiar passages of scripture. Uh, Proverbs 19, verse 23, and then James 4. Uh, Ebenezer, we just talked about that last month. James 4 and 6. I want to look uh, very quickly at Proverbs 19 and 23. It simply lists that the fear of the Lord leads to life. Somebody say leads to life. Then one rests content, untouched by trouble. Hallelujah. James 4 and 6 likewise says, but he gives us more grace. Hallelujah. He, he gives us more grace. That is why scripture says God opposes the proud, but shows favor to the humble. Hallelujah. The word of the Lord is already blessed. I want to preach for a little while from the thought, finding fulfillment in unfamiliar places. Hallelujah. Finding fulfillment in unfamiliar places. It's not an understatement, family, to, to say that we are indeed in unfamiliar places. Uh, we're in an unfamiliar place right now uh, as schools are closed down. Students are displaced, some uh, without adequate access to computers for distance learning. Some businesses, smaller businesses are, are shut down and simply probably will not open. Uh, uh, worship services uh, in public gatherings su such as this edifice hallelujah have, have been adjourned and people are no longer able to gather together and we've been reduced hallelujah to, to teleconferences and social media platforms and radios and cars and parking lots and Bullhorns, the, the economy, hallelujah, as we know it, is being threatened every single day that we remain quarantined. Uh, lest I forget that the death toll continues uh, to be on a rise with the scourge 
of this COVID-19 family. This is unfamiliar territory. Uh, come on, boredom, for many of us have set in. Come on, domestic violence in the households of only uh, verbal abuse has, has taken place and has been on the rise. Yet everyone is still on the ground. Everyone has to negotiate the, the basic human needs and, and for all of us, whether we're black, we're white, yellow, or brown, have a basic human need that have to be met. Uh, we, we need food, we need clothing, we need shelter, and, and that's no discrimination in that. And, and, and yet all of us, every race, every creed, every religion is being touched right now by this plague, this new day plague. Hallelujah. Now, 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 beloved, is not the time to become idle or lazy. Now, 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 help me, Holy Ghost. It, it's not the time to stay stuck. Uh, it's not the time to lose heart. Now is the time to gain ground. Hallelujah. That now is the time for us to, to gain ground. It's our time now. It's our time to draw closer to the Lord. It's time to hear the voice clearly and discern his will concerning your life. Lord have mercy. If you're next to, to your neighbor, let your neighbor know God's got a plan with your name on it. Help me, Holy Ghost. This, this is, in our lifetime, a defining moment. Hear me clearly, child of God. This is a defining moment in your life for every believer. And the question only becomes, what will you do with this moment? Help me, Holy Ghost. What, what, what will you do uh, with this time that has been assigned to you? In fact, it reminds me of a story uh, Tim Hansel writes in his book, Eating Problems for Breakfast. He says, Wakefield tells the story of a famous inventor by the name, maybe you heard him before, of Samuel Morse, who, who once Hallelujah was asked if he ever encountered situations where he didn't know what to do. Morse responded more than once. And whenever I could not see my way clearly, I knelt down to pray and God give me light, give me understanding. Morse received many honors for his invention of the telegraph, but felt undeserving. Here's what he said. I, I have made a valuable application of electricity, not because I was superior to other men. Here it is, but solely because God, who meant it for mankind, must reveal it to someone. Get this. And he was pleased to reveal it to me. Uh, child of God, in this season, if, if anybody is going to get some wisdom, if anybody is going to get some grace, if anybody is going to feel God's hand of mercy and favor and anointing on their lives, why not it be you? Uh, hallelujah. There, there are times in all of our lives when we feel uncomfortable and unfamiliar places. And in those times, we got to be found faithful, family, and humble obedience to God and to rest in his abounding grace. The act of process of fulfilling and fulfillment of a promise, the fulfillment of of all requirements. See this? I, I like definition of the two. Right it says there, it's the act right there where you'll see or the process of, of delivering a product such as a publication to a customer. Uh, what do you mean? Uh, how, God? How? How? I ask the question, how do I tell you people to produce to you when they're not even sure where they are? 
How, how, how do I hear your voice? How uh, do I give you what you need when I'm in unfamiliar territory? Here's how uh, you deliver what, what you're supposed to deliver to God. Hallelujah. You got to hear me, child of God. You got to get this thing right. God is saying to each and every one under the sound of my voice, when you get a shift in your perspective, Hallelujah, hallelujah. God can turn things around and make a move on your behalf. Listen, listen, listen. When, when you got the right perspective, then your steps are ordered. You're able to put one foot in front of the other. But when you're skewed and, and, and your mind is combobbled, when, when, when your mind is running to and fro, you're unstable in all of your ways and unfamiliar places, you can get turned around. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I want to help somebody. How, how do you find fulfillment in unfamiliar places? Number one, uh, you got to fear God. Hallelujah. And that will equal having life. Come on. Be fearful of God and have life. Uh, unless I remind you, Proverbs 19 and 23 says that the fear of of the Lord is, hallelujah, it leads to life of the one who rests content is untouched by trouble. Hallelujah. When, when, when you're untouched by trouble, God, God hallelujah, it, it is building a hedge of protection all around you. Come on, when, when you humble yourself, when you're in the position where you know that who, who moves, who has all power in his hands. Come on, you don't fear what man can do to you, but you fear the one who, who's got the last word over your eternal soul. Hallelujah. You got two choices today. You, you, you can either be righteous or you can be wicked. Come on, when you're righteous, hallelujah, you're upright. When you're righteous, hallelujah, come on, you can have a calm that passes all understanding. But when you are wicked, hallelujah, you, 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 you are upset, you are lazy, you are deceitful, hallelujah, hallelujah, you're foolish and even lazy when you're wicked. But when you're righteous, hallelujah, when, when, when you fear God, God puts everything in order for you. It, it doesn't mean that you're not going to have a cloudy day. It, it doesn't mean, hallelujah, that there ain't going to be some times when you get weary on this journey. All it really means is that come hell or high water, come on, it, whether it's raining or sunshiny outside, Come on, I've decided to follow Jesus. I, I, I've decided for myself that, that in the end we win. God has already proven himself. And so I'll trust him even if I can't trace him. I wish I had witnesses in, in here. Uh, uh, the problem for many is that too many of us Hallelujah. I have to agree with the noted scholar William Gunnell. He, he says we fear men so much. Because we fear God so little. Hallelujah. We, we, we fear men so much because we fear God so little. I, I'll go a step further and say too many have given priority to the wrong audiences. Hallelujah. We, we, we've given priority to people that don't have real authority. Uh, we, we, we give our anointing away. We, we, we give our position away. We, we, we give our own God-given authority away in order to be like, tell me, Holy Ghost. But, but in this season, God is calling us back home. Come on, turn and tell your neighbor, tell them it's time to go back home, man. It's time to get back to your roots. It's, it's time to get back on Nebo Station. It, it's time to seek the Lord while you have time. Got to fear God. Hallelujah. And, and have life. But point number two, as I close this sermon, you, you got to be humble. 
to others and experience God's grace. Some of y'all don't believe me, turn with me to James. James 4 and 6 puts it plainly, but he gives us, here it is, more grace. Somebody say more grace. He, he gives us more grace. That is why scripture said God opposes the proud, but shows favor to the humble. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I don't care how high you go. I don't care how many doors the Lord opens up for you. Come on, high five somebody and tell them remain humble. Come on, the believer. The believer must know this, that God gives grace to the humble and he resists the proud. It's not about what you have done. Come on, everything you know, God has taught you. Every place you've been, God has brought you. And so if you rest in humility, knowing that it's in God that I move and live and have my being, God will breathe afresh on your life. The believer does not deserve God's grace, does not deserve his blessings, yet God gives more grace and more grace. Somebody say more grace, more grace upon grace to those who are humble to him. Hallelujah. I, I, I want to I drop this in your spirit. God can do nothing for the person who is arrogant. God can do nothing for the person who is proud, married. Hallelujah. I don't know about you, but I ain't too proud to beg. I, I ain't too proud to say, it's me, oh Lord, standing in the need of prayer. It's not my mother, not my father, not my sister, no, my brother, but it's me. And, and I need your help in this season. Uh, when chaos is all around in this season, when people are running lawless, God, I need your help. I, I need your strength. I, I need your guidance. I, I need your power. Hallelujah. But, but the glorious gospel is such that God gives grace. Hallelujah. He gives us more grace to the humble. Uh, God, God is just waiting. He's waiting on somebody right now to, to get to the place where you can understand that you are not all of that in a bag of chips. God, God, God wants you to get to the place where, where, where you stay in that, uh, that place of humility. God will look after you and care for you. He, he's a loving, nourishing, uh, feeding, clothing, sheltering, protecting, giving God. And he gives more and more and more grace each and every day. The Bible says in Luke 14 and 11, for whosoever exalted himself shall be abased, and he that humbled himself shall be exalted. Hebrews 4 and 6 says, let us therefore come boldly unto the throne of grace, that we may obtain mercy and find grace to help in the time of need. James, James, James helps us with, with this final scripture. James 4 and 6 says, but he giveth more grace. Hallelujah. Wherefore he said, God resisteth the proud, but giveth grace unto the humble. Child of God, I want you to understand. Hallelujah. I need, I need you to get it in your spirit that we are the first to find fulfillment in unfamiliar places. Moses, hallelujah, found fulfillment on the backside of a desert. It, it, it's in the word of God, but, but it was in his wilderness where he received his assignment. David, David was happy and content to just be a shepherd boy. He, he wrote the Psalms, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He, he wrote the Psalms while shepherding sheep and his name got called the youngest out of the house of Jesse to, to stand against Goliath when everyone else was running, turning tails and ducking and running out. Jesus was fine, hallelujah, raising the sick and and, 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 and raising the dead. He healed the sick and he raised the dead. And yet, hallelujah, in a moment of human vulnerability, 
in the garden of Gethsemane Jesus says let this cup pass from me but nevertheless not my will but your will be done in that moment I believe the power of God gave him the strength to face his destiny child of God I don't know what you're facing today I don't, I don't, I don't know what your circumstances are today uh, but I need you to understand that God will give you grace if you stay humble. He, he'll add favor and flavor to your life when you fear the Lord. Be encouraged to know that God is still in control of your life. Sometimes the Lord calms the storm, but other times he lets the storm rage on and he simply calms his child. Trust God in the storm, child of God, and find peace in the midst of the storm. Father, we bless you. Lord, we honor you for the fruit of your word. We lift you up and we extol you in this place. God, we say thank you that we're finding fulfillment in unfamiliar places, unfamiliar places of restlessness, unfamiliar places Oh God, of, of boredom, Lord God, but you're calling us. You, you, you're birthing something in us to write. You're, you're, you're birthing something in us to be a better communicator, to be a better interceder. You're calling us. It's our time now. We've got to walk in that authority, walk in that humble obedience. Watch you breathe on our feeble efforts. God, we honor you. Lord, we thank you. We lift you up. God, we say, have your way. Have your way. We make room for you. Room for you in our lives. And we thank you, oh God. We trust you. We bless your holy and righteous name. Say together, amen, amen. Listen, if you're under the sound of my voice right now and you've never accepted Jesus as your personal Lord and Savior, the Bible is clear. If you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead, child of God, you will be saved. If, you're not, if you don't have a church home, amen, for the time of quarantine, make Ebenezer your virtual church home. Be, be a part of the working ministry of the prayer line every day at 12, on Tuesday at 6 a.m. and 12 o'clock, hallelujah. Be a part of, hallelujah, Bible study on Tuesdays at 7 p.m. We'll, we'll meet you there. We've got men's small groups. We've got women's small groups that are meeting even for your children and you. You can be a part and be engaged. Don't allow the enemy to defeat you while you're isolated. God's got more in store for you, child of God. He's got more in store for us. And I've said it time and time again, while we were gathered here at this altar, I still believe that the best, hallelujah, is yet to come. Let's walk in that authority. Listen, if this ministry has been a blessing to you, why don't you sow your seed of faith to give Lafay, the Ebenezer Baptist Church, 909 Queen Street. Why, why don't you sow so that the ministry work can continue to move forward. We are moving faith forward. God bless you, child of God. Amen. We want to welcome you to the Ebenezer Baptist Church here in Old Town, Alexandria, Virginia. Uh, we're grateful to serve uh, people and community as we are a church moving faith forward. We want you to meet us here, uh, video live stream, every Sunday at 11 a.m. We also have a prayer line that we meet on at 12. 
uh, and you're welcome to be a part of that as well on Facebook. Uh, we're grateful. Uh, my name is Albert Jackson. I serve uh, as the senior pastor here at Ebenezer. Uh, and we're just grateful uh, to serve you in this season. Child of God, I want you to understand that God is still in control of whatever's taking place in this season. Uh, be not dismayed, but every time God will take care of us. God bless you.